What's up, wrestling fans? I'm Scott Casper, just back from Manhattan with another new edition of Takedown Wrestling. Let's start at the New York Athletic Club, home of the Bill Farrell International and the first non-Olympic weight World Team Trials. First in the women's freestyle division is former King University teammates Allie Reagan and Sarah Hildebrand, both winning their final series and the right to represent the U.S. in Hungary. Hildebrandt took out the top-seeded Kelsey Campbell in the 55-kilo semis and then met up with three-time world team member Whitney Condor. In bout number one, it was Condor who took a one-point lead on a shot clock violation, but Hildebrandt answered with a four-point headlock and took the bout 4-3. With the score tied at one in the second, Hildebrandt hit another front headlock and swept the series 3-2. Today has been a crazy day. Um, my weight class is stacked. Like the number six girl and the number one girl, all everyone in between can like beat each other. So yeah. I wasn't worried about seeding because I knew I was gonna have hard matches all the way through. I had Kelsey Campbell in the semis, which was definitely a big match to get over. Um, but I won that one. I had game plans going into every single one of my matches, and normally I have a game plan and I don't stick to it all the way through. This time I was just persistent on it, even if it wasn't working in the beginning. Um, but I'm glad this is my first tournament back from getting surgery over the summer, so it's a great start to the cycle. Yeah, but you get to the World Championships, too. I mean, you've been on age group worlds. Yeah. What's it going to be like to represent your country at senior Olympic level? Oh, I mean, my gosh. I feel like it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm so glad I have that junior world experience, but this is obviously a bigger stage. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's bigger pride and more, more to ride on my back for my country and stuff. I'm excited about that. Let's go to 60 kilos. Reagan made her fourth U.S. World Team with a two-match sweep over the second seed, Mallory Velty. In bout one, Reagan hit a four-point hip toss and tacked on two more takedowns for an easy 8-2 victory. Reagan ran out to a three-point lead in the second match of the series. Velty fired back but was just unable to connect. 4-1 the final for Reagan. I mean, obviously, you were disappointed with the Olympic trials, and yeah, you know, but you got right back out here on the mat when they said another world championship yep. opportunity. You jumped at it. Talk yeah. about how you wrestled. Um, I thought I wrestled good. I think that there's definitely a lot more, lot more to do. I want to be a world champ in December, so I think that building and definitely keep switching on my offense, moving my feet, just wrestling throughout the whole six minutes is crucial. So I think that there's a play. I kind of did that today, but I definitely need to enhance that and do that more. So I'm never satisfied. Definitely going back to work. In men's freestyle, world bronze medalist James Green earned an automatic berth to the championship series where he faced the second seed, Jordan Oliver. Green scored on a step out and a shot clock violation for a 2-1 decision and then hit a counter ankle pick midway through the second match to clinch the series 4-3. You know, you just kind of do what you know you can do best because sitting in the finals, you never know who you're going to get. So, I mean, once we knew we were going to wrestle Jordan, we watched a little film, but didn't really change the game plan, just try to get out there. He got going more than I did in the second match, but I had some good leg defense and you know, kept my ground, kept my position, aware of the match. So it was definitely a good match and prepare for the World Championships. And here's about everybody hoped was going to happen. Another one versus two matchup at 61 kilos. Logan Steber met up with former Big Ten foe Tyler Graff. In the first match, Steber hit three takedowns and two gut wrenches for the Tech. More of the same in the second, two takedowns and three turns. Steber took the series and was named the outstanding wrestler for his performance. Well, you dominated. I mean, your matches, you were able to score a lot of points. How'd you feel out there when you were wrestling? It's a different set of kids in most yeah. cases, right? No, I felt really good. I felt there's one period that I, uh, I didn't feel the best today, but besides that, you know, I, I recovered fast and I felt good and, you know, the weight cut was good and I was I felt great today, so I felt, I felt good. You know, I felt good to be back at a, uh, a weight that I, I liked a little better. Let's go to the Greco-Roma division. At 71 kilos, Alejandro Sancho and Christopher Gonzalez traded wins to open the series. In the deciding third, Gonzalez scored on a late counter and punched his ticket to the World Championships for one, the final. Christopher Gonzalez going to the World Championships, man. Talk about the feeling when you saw you had the lead and, and the time was going away. Man, first, I just want to congratulate Sancho. He's a hell of an opponent. Oh, yeah, great series. He's a... Uh, been a teammate of mine and a competitor now for quite some time, so a uh, shout out to him. But um, feels great, man. I haven't been in this situation before. First senior tournament win for me. Hopefully, uh, a lot more to come. So, finally, at 80 kilos, 2015 World Team member and number one seed Patrick Martinez met with Army teammate John Anderson. 
Martinez took the first match on a pair of passivity calls, 3-1. And then Anderson evened the series with a four-point toss, 4-2, leading 2-1 with just 20 seconds left in the third. It was Martinez who had to take down on the edge of the mat and held on for the exciting 4-1 victory. What was the key here? Was it technique? Did you have a better conditioning? I mean, somebody had to come out of that. It was a war. I mean, it was a battle. Guys. It was a fight. And that's his style. He's a brawler. Uh, he wants to get in there and just hand fight. I don't know how, if that's really wrestling. It's not very technical, but uh, it'll win him some matches. So I had to control the pace, control positions, and uh, go from there. All right, stay tuned for college highlights and a lot more. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Store. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interest in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Well, with four pins and eight wins, Penn State improved to 2-0 for a lopsided victory over the 12th-ranked Stanford. The duel started at 165, where redshirt freshman Vincenzo Joseph dropped a high-scoring 18-12 decision to Keaton subject. At 125, true freshman Nick Soriano racked up nearly three minutes of riding time in his rec hall debut. He downed fourth-ranked Connor Schramm 3-0. Top-ranked Zane Rutherford gave PSU its second pin of the duel, and Jason Nolf made it three. 36-3, the final for the Nittany Lions. Kale, this early in the season, how beneficial is a win like Nick had today over a quality opponent like Nick? This Nick, uh, that was great. Shram's a tough kid, you know, returning All-American. Um, real strong, fast, just tough in all three, just solid. So that was, uh, that's, a, that's a great win for, for Nick. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's not satisfied. He's not going to be satisfied. I mean, it's early. and. Speaking of our whole team, we're going to keep improving, and um, you know we're not trying to win right now. We're trying to improve. If we do that, we'll be uh, we're probably going to win. So that's 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 the plan. But uh, we have a lot to build off of, and it's a lot it's a lot more fun. It's a lot easier to build off of success than um, than than not. So we're, we're excited with, with with this opportunity. We're very grateful. The fans were great. Um, they always are very consistent, and we want to match that consistency, obviously, with our effort. Well, the sixth-ranked Hokies of Virginia Tech improved to 3-0 on the year after topping 24th-ranked Chattanooga 29-6, that in front of a sold-out crowd at the Moss Art Center on Sunday. Joey Dance gave the Hokies an early four-point lead with a major decision at 125. We go to 149. Solomon Chisco used two takedowns, a reversal and riding time to pick up the major. And Sal Mastriani made it back to the bonus point victory column with a tech fall at 157. Three more wins from Zach Epperly, Zach Zavatsky, and Jared Hutt put the duel out of reach. And the third-ranked heavyweight Ty Walswell, he made it four straight victories for the Hokies. He topped 11th-ranked Jared Johnson 13-7. I think we progressed, you know, it's, it's still early in the year and, and uh, after last weekend I felt like we were just so, so average and, and I would rate us above that overall as a team. You know, you always have when you're, when you're putting 10 guys out on the, on the mat, you know, you always have, uh, you know, kind of mixed feelings in that, you know, we feel really good about certain weights and other weights we probably didn't attack enough and um, 
Uh, oh, but overall, I think the effort was was better. And you know, we've got a super tough weekend coming up next uh, Sunday. We'll be wrestling in an art center, just exactly like this or similar to this in uh, Columbia, Missouri, with the third ranked team in the nation. So we'll find out what we're really made of. And then Friday night, we're at the University of Northern Iowa. So we've got two really tough opponents on the road. Uh, so you know, we needed to get out here and uh, improve, and I felt like we did improve. Well, after an impressive opening weekend, South Dakota State has moved into the top 25. The Jacks moved to number 21 in the NWCA coaches poll with a win over Iowa State and two open tournament titles for 133-pounder Seth Gross and 197-pound junior Nate Roder. Here's head coach Chris Bono with some of his takes from the early season and what's up next for SDSU. What a great week it was for us. Uh, Friday night we started off with a great win over Iowa State. Uh, came in, they came in 14th ranked in the country. Uh, our, our, our guys wrestled so well, and it was uh, what an awesome experience. I cannot thank the fans enough. Uh, a new record, 1,800 people in there. Uh, it sounded like 5,000. Uh, again, fans, thank you. Students, thank you. What a great turnout we had from you. Um, you know, but we need more. We need us to keep filling that place up. Uh, next home match against Iowa is December 2nd. Uh, top three program in the country. We need to get 5,000 people in there, and let's get that thing filled. Um, Sunday, we competed in the DAC Open. Two champions, congratulations, Nate Roder, beating a highly ranked guy from Nebraska in the finals, and congratulations to Seth Gross, both of them Dactronics uh, champions. We had numerous other placers. Uh, congratulations, guys, proud of where we are. Great first weekend of competition, um, and we can't wait to get back into it. Hey, you're watching Takedown Power by our friends at Yellow Blue Ecotech. We'll be right back. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood, Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. Following the record-breaking success of the grab on the gridiron in Iowa City, New Jersey wrestling rivals Rutgers and Princeton will hold an outdoor duel November 19th. The first ever battle at the birthplace will take place prior to the Penn State Rutgers football game at High Point Solutions Stadium as the Scarlet Knights look to shatter a season attendance record in a single duel. I think the best thing about being in Jersey is we're able to do this in front of, you know, hopefully 20,000 people. You can't do that everywhere. You know, you could do it in State College, Pennsylvania. You could do it in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Maybe you could do it in Minnesota. And obviously you can do it in Iowa, but you can do it in New Jersey. And I think that's what's made the best partnership here with these guys is we're both from Jersey and, and we're, we've really sold some, you know, asked people to, to buy some markers here and say, come on out for this. So, but you could do it here. And that's hopefully what, what we show wrestling. We want to be involved in huge events and, you have to showcase the sport. It's what I've been preaching the whole time. Um, I think where wrestling has fallen short is that we don't give ourselves enough credit and we don't get out there and promote enough. Uh, you know, one of the guys on staff, Coach Dubuque, his, his, one of his primary roles is to promotion. And we have a promotion surrounding every, everything we do. And now that we've done this, I think it just says to everyone else, you know, you can do these things. You can get 15,000 people, 30, 
20, 30,000 people to a wrestling event if you do the right things leading up to it. It doesn't have to be like a high school gym with 12 people. You can promote it. And what's really going to draw people, I think, are the matchups. Like he said, this, this duel is going to be – it's going to be a good one. And if you look at our programs, we've kind of been on a pretty steep trajectory right next to each other. And so this is a big moment for both of our teams. This is a really exciting event. Um, none of us on our team has ever been able to wrestle in front of this many people at one time and outside in, front of, in a football stadium. So uh, it's just really exciting. It makes it uh, a lot easier to train for, a lot easier to get up for. And everyone's really excited to be a part of it. We really want to be known as the best sport at Princeton University, and I think this can really put us there. Well, for more information on the battle at the birthplace, look for scarletknights.com. You can watch the event live on Flow. On our way to break, here's USA Wrestling's Take 10 with Tony Ramos. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Adidas. Who's your celebrity crush? Carrie Underwood. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, Iron Man's my favorite superhero. So I guess just to be as smart as Tony Stark was. If you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Abe Lincoln. What's your favorite TV show? I've been watching Parks and Rec a lot. Oh, that's good. Um, what actor would play you in a movie about your life? Um, I would probably say my favorite actor, and that'd be Morgan Freeman. <laughs> who, who would probably play me? I would say Mark Wahlberg. What's your favorite video game and who would you challenge in it? Madden. Um, I'd probably like to play someone who, who's in the pros, uh, maybe Tony Romo. Do you have any hidden talents? I do not. I don't have any hidden talents. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, I like ice cream a lot. Uh, I just got some last night, actually. If you could read one person's mind, who would it be? My wife's. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch, with the freshest ingredients, and 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to Takedown TV. Our very special guest in the Nike hot seat today, Captain Lee Janes from the U.S. Army. Lee, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well today. It was good to see you in New York recently at the Bill Farrell. It was over the weekend. Uh, Friday ended a little differently for you at the, at the Bill Farrell this year. Um, I got to witness. I'd heard some rumblings that this might take place, but I got to witness you and your daughter on the mat, center mat right in front of me, doing uh, the one thing wrestlers do and really is special. You took your shoes off and literally at 35 years of age, you retired. Congratulations, first of all. Let's talk a little bit about how you made the, the decision to retire. She didn't want me to wrestle. <laughs> um, I... You know, I didn't I didn't plan on retiring. It was just, you know, 
um, it was time. You, you know, I, nobody really ever, you can't really predict when it's going to end. And I thought that, you know, the cliche to retire during, you know, if you don't make an Olympic team or whatever, but I still felt like I, in my heart, I wanted to compete. So I went out and I was a training partner in Brazil for Joy Silva and, you know, and, and then I decided, okay, well, I'm going to take on this new venture. I'm going to change states and move and, and change clubs and coaches. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to accomplish it this in, in like a month time. And, and then I'm going to go to world team trials and I'm going to go win them. <laughs> that was my masterful plan. But, you know, it didn't really work out like that because like once you get implanted in the real life, it's not that you, it's not that you can't train and, and, still be successful it's just that things are a lot different than when you have the structured practice when you're at the olympic training center and when you have you know and it takes a lot of time to make the adjustment to a new coach and a new program and all that and um you know and what it comes down to is this was the right time i i just wanted i i didn't want to win anymore i didn't want to fight i didn't want to compete i didn't want to wrestle anymore i just wanted wanted to be a part of wrestling in a different capacity and I, I didn't plan on and want to lose, of course, but when you lose your fire to to fight and compete, it's it it just extinguishes really fast. And so uh, while I didn't go out there intending to lose, I just didn't really want to wrestle anymore. All right, so let's talk about the sport over the last 16 years or so during your involvement from your infancy in the sport at 17 to uh, the mature captain, mother, wife that you become, founder of Chick Wrestling or Chick Wrestler, um, the various things that you've done with your life, it seems like the sport has literally grown up all around you. Can yeah, you I, I didn't even honestly know what I was getting myself into. I, I was just looking for an opportunity to go to college. I didn't have a lot of resources and so I would fight and not look back and some of the girls at the group home were like, man, to the girl that, that took off and never looked back. And I, um, I just didn't want to look back and, and just keep taking steps forward in order to, to get better. And it turns out that I have a lot of irons in the fire. Now that I put my shoes in the middle of the mat, I'm realizing how much I've actually accomplished along the way. And it blows me away, but I can't stop now because obviously, I mean, I have, I want to get to the point where I'm extremely financially stable. Um, I still have like seven more years or five or seven more years that I can serve in the military and get a lot accomplished. And, um, they, they have a post nine 11 GI bill. I want to expound upon that. And I also have hopes of starting a Northeast regional training center out in Maine. So there's a lot of things for me to, to dig into. And, um, you know, it seems like 17 years was a long time to have a wrestling career, but it just flew by. And I know that the next 17 are going to fly by too. So if I don't get moving like tomorrow, <laughs> then I'm not going to get done in time. Lee, congratulations on a career well wrestled. Next up for you, just a career of coaching, a career of giving back. Out there that can help me. I have tons of mats. I have tons of space. I have tons of builders. I just need, um, you know, we, we have the resources in order to, to put it up. Um, I just need to get the funding. So if there's anybody out there that's interested in helping me with this project, I have all the resources to get it going. I'm going to start some grant writing over the next month, and uh, we'll see how close we can get to, to being able to, to put up this facility. But I would really love to get a, a Northeast Regional Training Center up and running so that the girls from Massachusetts – the, the athletes, not just girls, all athletes from, from the surrounding areas um, can come and use the facility out there. And um, I think that would be a huge contribution in that particular region um, to the United States of America for wrestling. So that is a huge goal of mine. I think it's a five-year plan. I know I can make it happen. If you put your your mind to it, you've, you've never disappointed me in the past. You always get her done. I've never not <laughs> followed through. I've never not followed through. There isn't anyone, not one thing that I put down on paper as a goal that I haven't followed through with. So I know that I can do this. I know I can make it happen. Lee Jane, thank you for your time. Again, an outstanding career. We appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the next steps look like and let us know what we can do to help. We'll be happy to help you in any way, shape, or form that we possibly can. Thanks for having me. And thanks, Mikey, for always supporting me.
Big shout out to our friends at Virginia Tech, Rutgers, Penn State, and of course USA Wrestling. Don't forget to join Tony Hager and I later this week for Global Wrestling News. And tune in Saturday morning for the longest running wrestling radio show on the planet. For all of us at Take Out, I'm Scott Casper. And thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.